Now I see this happening all the time, where someone would share a thought, an idea, an opinion, and then they add extra things which completely pull down the value of the thing they just said. And it's so painful to watch because ultimately what they're doing is they're causing other people to unintentionally devalue the things they say. And I used to be a big culprit of this, so I know that a lot of these bad speaking habits form as a result of a poor self-worth and a high aversion to any type of conflict. So what are these three speaking habits? Before I share them with you, let me introduce myself. For those who are new here, my name is Asha, and I work with introverted professionals who struggle with social anxiety, and I help them stop people pleasing, confidently express themselves, and find their natural assertiveness. So what is the first bad habit? This one is pretty straightforward. It is saying, I don't know. And I mean saying it all the time, saying in the beginning, in the middle, and the end. But most people usually say it at the end, where they share their idea, and then they say, oh, I don't know, at the end. It's, it's, it's so painful because I used to do this myself. And there's the thing, saying I don't know at the end can be used in a way where it's not necessarily coming out of a place of insecurity because for example, I do it intentionally now when I actually do not know and I don't think that the person should put a lot of weight in what I'm saying. But when you struggle with social anxiety, saying I don't know at the end uh, it becomes a really bad habit because ultimately you do feel insecure, you do not trust the things you're saying, you don't think you should be a voice of authority on any subject and you just kind of say I don't know at the end which completely pulls down the value of what you're saying. The second one is adding way too many caveats. So. When you do this, it's because you're worried they're going to be misunderstood, you're worried that people are going to misunderstand what you're going to say and then get offended. So for example, let's just say at work, you feel like that things aren't being done as efficiently as possible and you have a new strategy. So you come up with one and when you're proposing that idea, you preface it with tons of caveats like, you know, it's not like the old one, there's anything wrong with it, I'm not trying to offend anyone, I know you put a lot of effort into this. and Caveats do help ease the other side, however, when you do this, what you fail to recognize is the people who would naturally already understand that you're not coming from a place to offend would devalue your words because it comes off as you're really insecure with what your idea is rather than you trying to actually explain yourself. So really what's happening is you're trying to appease people who could get offended, which you know, odds are they probably would get offended anyway. Um, and while you're doing that, you lose the respect of people who wouldn't have gotten offended with what you said because they would understand that you're not trying to offend anyone in the first place. So really, you have to make, to make that decision. Do you want to cater to the people who would probably find offense in what you're going to say or do you want to cater to people who wouldn't in the first place and they would love to hear your idea? Now, the last bad speaking habit is the inability to handle silences. Now, when I was struggling with social anxiety, whenever I finished my point and the other person didn't have something to say immediately, I would get so uncomfortable and I'll just keep speaking because I didn't want to handle the silence. I didn't know why. I just became so nervous when it got quiet. And as a result, I'll end up rambling and rambling and sometimes even talk myself out of my own idea. Now, being able to be comfortable with silences after you made your point, it's such a powerful tool because it allows the other person to understand you've made your point and now they can just sit down and think about it before responding to you. However, if you're uncomfortable with that silence, you just keep talking, they don't even have time to process what you're saying and odds are the extra fluff might derail you from your point. Alright guys, it's a quick and short video, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful and I hope that you're able to slowly catch yourself when you're doing these speaking habits and slowly try to work your way out of them. Stop with the I don't knows, don't add so many caveats and be comfortable with silences. And as per usual, if any one of you guys would love to overcome your social anxiety, speak confidently and find your natural assertiveness, feel free to book a strategy call with me, I'll leave the link in the description, I'll talk to you guys soon.